Hello, my gamers! Like a policy, JFG's Gaming, and we are back with another episode of Genshin Impact. So, in this episode, we'll be taking a look at uh, Arataki Ito's uh, story quest before we actually we're going to complete all the Inazuman story quests before we head off to the next Archon quest, which is located back in Liwei, which might take us to, or actually will take us all the way to Samira, which is the next region. So I'm, I'm not sure if Kazuha will be uh, in Inazuma, because I know he's in Inazuma, but he's always with Beidou's crew. But we'll see as this goes along. Because after Ka Kamisata Yato, I know Yalan is uh, from Liwei. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Uh, either uh, I'm going to go back to Liwei, do Yalan, and then when I proceed with Kazuha, it's going to be... Hopefully in the way and not back in Inazuma because I don't like the whole back and forth idea. But anyways, let's get started with Arataki Ito's uh, story quest. Alright. Now, where is it going to be? Oh, it's just nearby. I didn't expect that. Talk to Catherine. Okay. Hello, Catherine. Beatles. Yes. I'm afraid that I have another task that requires your assistance. The Adventurers Guild has recently received a commission directly from the Tenryo Commission. The assignment is both urgent and dangerous. After assessing the assignment, the Guild has concluded that seasoned adventurers are required. Naturally, you came to mind. <laughs> Just another day on the job for us! Allow me to explain. The Tenryo Commission recently issued an arrest warrant for a young Oni by the name of Arataki Ito. An Oni? You mean those big, tough-looking guys with horns on their heads? That's correct. This particular Oni is quite vocal and audacious, so he already has quite the reputation on the streets. That said, he has never been caught up in major trouble of any kind. So it came as a surprise to learn that he has recently been accused of stealing things, and sometimes even whisking away the people themselves. But it doesn't end there. When the Tenryo Commission dispatched a Doshin to apprehend him, he assaulted the Doshin before making a getaway with his accomplices. So let Paimon guess. It's up to us to bring the Sony in! No problemo! This does sound like a job for the Traveler! He'll be back with that Oni in no time! I have complete confidence you will succeed. However, please exercise caution. This Oni also happens to hold a vision, and is the leader of an organization known as the Arataki Gang. <laughs> On second thought, Haima will leave the fighting to you. The last place Simon wants to be is in a gang fight. We are still investigating Arataki Ito's potential motives behind these incidents, as well as his current whereabouts. But please ask around in the streets as well. There will likely be others more familiar with Ito's circumstances than I am, who can provide you with useful information. Okay, we'll go ask around. Thank you. I will await your return. Ad Astra Avisosk. Well, let's start asking around on the streets. Hopefully we'll learn a little more about this Arataki Ito guy and figure out where he might have run off to. Arataki Ito? Yeah, I've heard of the guy. Word is, he did something monumentally stupid, then ran off before they could catch him. And to be completely honest, I was a little surprised when I first heard it. Okay, well, I mean, not that surprised. Wait, you mean he already had a bad reputation? Well, no, not exactly. <coughs> He's just very overbearing in everything he does. Big and brash and always making a ruckus. So, on the one hand, he's a larger-than-life kind of guy. 
But on the other hand, he's emotionally volatile. When he's in a good mood, he's as high as a kite. But when he gets upset, he gets completely enraged. I don't personally see him as a bad guy, but I guess I wouldn't put it past him to get all riled up and lose control. Hmm. You know, I'm afraid that I'm not too sure myself. <coughs> I keep a pretty good eye on what's happening in the city, and as far as I can tell, he just idles the days away. When someone asks for it, he's willing to lend a helping hand, but other than that, he's just out making a scene with the kids on the street or his gang. <sighs> if I had to guess, his lack of income finally drove him to do something more drastic to make ends meet. I'm afraid that I don't have much else to tell you. He tends to spend his time with people a little more lively than myself. Perhaps you could try asking around some more. Okay, thanks! Arataki Ito? Hmm, oh yeah. I heard about that whole thing. I'm sure it must have been a mix-up on the Tenryo Commission's end. He could never do anything so dastardly. Huh? How can you be so sure? Is he really as trustworthy as all that? <laughs> no, perhaps you misunderstand me. When I said he could never do anything dastardly, I meant he literally doesn't have what it takes. You mean he's not smart enough? Mm, maybe a story will explain it better. So, he used to spend a lot of time playing rock, paper, scissors and hide and seek with the kids on the streets. Kids, being kids, aren't exactly the most difficult to outsmart. I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at here. He used to lose all the time, sometimes catastrophically. <laughs> so he's a man-child. On purpose, though, right? No, not at all. The one time I saw him win, he started jumping around and yelling, I won! I finally won! I and so on. Then he took the kid's candy as his prize and ate it right there in front of him. Ugh, that's just plain wrong. He did take it way too far that time. The poor kid started crying, so I stepped in and gave Ito a scolding. He was pretty quick to admit that he was fully in the wrong, and it wasn't long before the kid had stopped crying and was laughing and playing again as if nothing had ever happened. In fact, the children quite like playing with him because he's always serious about the stakes and never throws a game on purpose. So, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, is a guy who can't even beat kids at a children's game really going to be capable of these kinds of diabolical deeds? He doesn't sound like a bad guy at all. In fact, he kind of sounds like a man of integrity. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Still, the Tenryo Commission's evidence against him is supposed to be irrefutable. So, I'm not trying to condone his actions or anything. If he really has messed up big time, then he should face the consequences just like anyone else. Thanks for the info. We'll keep asking around. Arataki Ito. <laughs> of course I know him. We've been trying to apprehend him recently. We know he's already left Inazuma City, but with no clues to follow, we have no choice but to commission others for help, including the Adventurer's Guild. Catherine says that Arataki Ito hasn't done anything seriously bad before, so it seems pretty strange. Paimon's curious. Is there any evidence of all this stuff he's accused of? Yes, of course. Otherwise, we'd never have put so many people on the case. For starters, most thieves will try to devise a way to conceal their identity. But for an Oni, the horns are a dead giveaway. I mean, the whole city could have recognized it was him. At first, he was just one of our suspects. But when we went to investigate, he personally confessed to everything and started trying to provoke the officers. 
What's most frustrating is that he then managed to escape along with his entire gang. He must have been planning the whole thing right from the start. Of course he did. Whether material or psychological, there is plenty of evidence either way. He's never had a mora to his name his entire life, and he's never kept down a real job. Word is that he also takes care of someone in his gang, and that the burden of it takes quite the toll on him. After scrounging for a living all these years, maybe he thought that being the bad guy would be an easier ride. As for his psychological motives, it's a bit embarrassing to talk about, but we... <clears throat> confiscated his vision during the Vision Hunt Decree. At the time, Arataki Ito put up quite a fight. It took a huge amount of manpower and resources, and in the end, we had to enlist the help of Kujo Sara to finally secure his vision. The vision hunt was a mistake, but we never expected that he would go to such extreme lengths to take revenge on us. He does sound a little unstable, just like people have been saying. If the two of you are able to capture Arataki Ito, please bring him straight here. We'll handle him from there. Thanks for all the info. Hmm. Too bad we still don't know where he could have run off to. We already got word on the street, so maybe it's time to talk to a real specialist. Jaime remembers that there's a detective agency here in Inazuma. Maybe we can try asking there. Please speak to President Sangha. I'm just a help. Welcome to Bantan Sangha Detective Agency. What will you have me solve? Hello! We'd like to ask some questions about Arataki Ito. Oh, him again. Sure. I have answers. We've already done some investigating for the Tenryo Commission. But first, do you have enough Moro to cover the fee? I've heard all about your travels. After everything you've been through, I'm sure you understand the way these sorts of things work. Uh, how much more are we talking about here? A one-off payment of 397,000 Mora, up front. Plus a further 5% of your Adventures Guild remuneration as my commission, if Arataki Ito is successfully caught and brought to justice. Whoa! That's crazy expensive! How did you even come up with the price that high? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't finished. It just so happens the initial fee has already been paid in full by the Tenryo Commission. All you'll need to pay is the small commission fee. And, as for that amount, I'll settle things with the Adventures Guild once we have Ito. So, from the way I see it, you guys are getting a pretty nice deal. Now then, to give you the full picture in this case, we must first recount a well-known Inazuman fairy tale. Time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The blue oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an oni. The crimson oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. So the blue oni said to the crimson oni, Akka, I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the Crimson Oni chased the Blue Oni away. The Crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. Huh? That's it? What about the little blue pony? Whatever happened to him? 
I suppose the blue oni simply disappeared, never to be seen again. Only the crimson oni remain now. Of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through all the trouble of telling it. One interpretation is that the story is actually broadly based on historical events and that Arataki Ito is, in fact, a descendant of the Crimson Oni. What I'm trying to tell you is that the Oni have sacrificed a lot in the past in order to finally integrate themselves into human society. But there are still some volatile personality traits in the Oni bloodline. Every generation of Oni inherits these traits. So while Arataki Ito has never been known to commit a wrongful act in the past, can we ever completely rule out the possibility of him one day allowing this side of him to take over? What? How could he do that? After the Blue Oni's sacrifice? That would be such a betrayal! That's a very old story. Nobody knows how long it's been since the Blue Oni disappeared. We can only assume that they have long since died out, in which case, it would be quite a stretch to say it still counts as a betrayal at this point. Besides, the suspect has already confessed. What is there left to discuss? According to my investigation, he was headed southwest. I would bet he's already made it to Yashiori Island by now. The Tenryo Commission is unable to enter territory controlled by Songonomiya troops. No doubt that's the reason Arataki Ito chose to flee in that direction. Don't mention it. I'm just doing my duty. Wait! Paimon still has a question. If Arataki Ito has given in to his bad side, won't that mean he's extra mean and violent now? I could only assume so. Judging from his previous bouts, he is a skilled fighter with a lot of brute strength. Whether or not you'll be able to handle him, that I do not know. Okay, but what's up with people throwing beans at Oni? What use is that? Ah, yes. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that Arataki Ito is allergic to beans. In fact, all Oni will avoid beans, but especially Ito. I heard that just touching a bean is enough to incapacitate him. If you could weaken him a bit by triggering his allergies, perhaps you'd have better luck subduing him. Ah, uh, like uh, it's fine. He's the bad guy, remember? It just so happens that I have a bag of beans right here. I was planning to use them to make some porridge, but I think you will find a better use for them. Of course. I will charge the Adventurer's Guild a fair and reasonable rate for the beans. Sneaky! But also, thanks! Let's head to Yashiori Island and start looking for Ito! According to Detective Sango, Ito should be somewhere around here. Catherine mentioned that he has a vision. Why not see if you can track him down using elemental sight? Look, footprints! Let's see where they lead! Hmm, there's a camp here, but nothing stands out as particularly noteworthy. Let's keep moving forward. Ito? I would say that's definitely him. Do you see the horns? He doesn't seem to be looking this way. 
Perfect. Let's try the beans Detective Sango gave us. It'll save a lot of hassle if we can avoid a fight. Oh, what? Oh, I gotta sneak. <laughs> what the hell? Whimpering? Uh, are you okay? What should we do? Paimon didn't think he'd react this badly. Uh, d d don't, don't be alarmed. It's just my, uh, uh, my allergies acting up. I've got it under control. It's all right. I got this. I just, 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 just gotta tough it out. <laughs> just, I, I can take it. I can take it. Sure. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I gotta catch my breath here. Whatever it is you want, it's gonna have to wait. I need a moment. Okay. <sighs> That's, that's better. That sure took a lot out of me, though. <laughs> hey, why'd you have to be so mean, huh? Surprise attacking me like that. Uh, you never be too careful when dealing with a oh, I get it. So you're here to bring me in. How in the world did you find me all the way out here? <laughs> well, whatever. If you think I'm going back with you, you can forget it. I'd walk away if I were you. I pack a mean punch, you know. I don't want to hurt any regular folks like you. That's pretty big tack considering all the beans we have. You're the one behind the robbery and the missing people, aren't you? Yep, that's right. Me. All by myself. Nobody else. As boss of the Arataki gang, I gotta nab a little food and drink when we're running low. That's only natural, right? Yeah, but nabbing people? That's taking it a bit far, don't you think? Uh, not when their families will pay good mora to see them again. Easy pickings. And the extra mora means I can, uh, uh, give some to my gang to spend on themselves. <laughs> Hey, what's with all the questions? Like I said, I'm not going back with you, so stop wasting everybody's time. No way, mister! We've accepted a commission to bring you back! What did you say, little one? Go on, say it to my face. Uh, well, well, mostly he took a commission to bring you back. Looks like you aren't gonna let this drop. In that case, we... Uncle Ito! Don't run now. Careful or you'll fall. What's taking you so long? You said we were gonna have a beetle fight today. Come on, you promised! Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. Still going ahead. <laughs> but, y but you see, uh, I I've been out here for ages, and I still can't find a beetle that I like. So just give Uncle Ito a little more time, okay? Huh? Who are they? Are they your friends? Uh, yeah, that's right. I told them not to come, but what can I say? They were just too worried about me. <laughs> it's because of a little thing called, uh, prestige. Yeah, because of all the prestige Uncle Ito has. Huh? What are you talking about? We... Come on, just play along. Leave the kid out of this. Uh, Uncle Ito, you don't look so good. You look like you're about to fall over. 
<laughs> That's because Uncle Ito bumped his noggin on a tree branch while looking for a beetle. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's all good, though. These horns are rock solid. Okay. If you say so. Granny and I will keep heading back now. Don't be too long. Uh, yep. I'll be right there. Hope you're ready to lose today. Who were those people? The old lady was Granny Oni. She's the one who took me in and raised me. And the kid's name is Daisuke. I, I took him in just a while back. They're both like family to me. They escaped with me out this way, along with my boys from the Arataki gang. If I didn't bring them with me, the Tenryo Commission would be knocking on their doors for sure. I had no idea you were so caring towards others. Right. But if you care about them so much, then you shouldn't have done all that stuff that made them worry about you in the first place. I, uh, uh, listen, how about we make a deal? You two let me go wrap things up with Daisuke, and once we're done battling beetles, the two of us will settle things with a duel. If you win, I'll come quietly. You can take me back to Inazuma City, and you won't hear a peep out of me. Why? Because I'm an Oni of my word. I'll just tell little Daisuke that my friends and I need to step outside for a moment. That way you won't worry. Cool? Hmm. What should we do? There is the kid to consider. All right, you have a deal. Oh, it's on! I like your style. <laughs> All right, but first things first. I need to find an Oni Kabuto to battle with. I've been looking here for ages and haven't found myself a winner yet, so it's time to try somewhere else. Come with me. Saves you worrying that I might skedaddle. <laughs> You guys have seen Oni Kabuto out in the wild, right? Even though they might look menacing on the outside, they're big softies on the inside. Most of the time, they're just sitting there doing nothing. But let me tell ya, once the Oni Kabuto start fighting, ho ho ho, they won't let anything get in their way. The grand game of beetle fighting is a match where your beetle tries to flip the other beetle onto its back. Hey, it's not just some kid's game, okay? There's way more to it than that. I have taken part in more beetle fights than you would believe. At least 800. I may have even crossed the thousand mark by this point. Anyway, after a while, you can tell a beetle's fighting potential just by looking at its shape, size, and the patterns on its body. But it's not just about all the physical stuff. Oh no, your Oni Kabuto's gotta be in the right headspace as well. If it's not up for a fight or doesn't have the guts, well, then it's game over. <laughs> Boy, are you too lucky you ran into me. When it comes to beetles, I'm the expert that the experts go to. I'll show you all you need to know. But we're not the ones that will be playing. We're just here to keep an eye on you. Oh, yeah. yeah anyway, not a problem. You two might think I'm just tooting my own horns here, but just you wait. I'll make you a beetle expert in no time. And by the way, that kid has one tough beetle. We can't underestimate it. You have to find a real lean, mean beetle warrior. Okay, so he's not the sharpest horn on the Oni. Okay, let me see. <laughs> ah, there. Let's head to that hill. I'll bet my bottom mora we're gonna find some major league Oni Kabuto hiding out there. Uh-oh! Lightning storm! Ah, just our luck. Well, hopefully that'll scare all the wimpy beetles away and leave the tough ones for us. Go! Oh, darn it, they're all gone. Let's hop down from here and take a look. My gut's telling me that there's a king-sized beetle just below. <gasps> look! You see all those purple things? It's a whole pile of Oni Kabuto! <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about! Huh? Oh, what the... Ah, oh, no! Not lavender melons! <clears throat> well... 
Even a pro like myself can make a mistake from time to time. It's okay, just gotta roll with the punches. Let's try somewhere else. This is the one! This is the one! <laughs> As long as you're in my company, you're guaranteed to find yourself an Onikabuto. Yeah, it's on the smaller side, but uh, size isn't everything in a beetle fight. But you said earlier that size matters. Just let the expert explain, okay? What smaller beetles lack in strength, they make up for in agility. They usually got a whole bunch of sick moves just ready to whip out when the right moment comes. Listen, you can never see a beetle's true energy until it's in the ring. It might look a bit young and docile, but that's got its advantages. Haven't you ever heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Young beetles that have never fought before always go all out in their first fight. <laughs> Older beetles that have already been through the wars tend to just cower in the corner the moment they see a strong opponent. Hey, didn't I say not to worry? Come on, just have a little faith, would ya? My experience is telling me that this Onikabuto was spawned to be a champion! Right here! Look what Paimon found! If we're gonna battle some beetles, then Paimon wants in! It's not like we have anything else to do. When you hop down, Paimon flew us somewhere else nearby and found this one! What do you think, Ito? Big and strong and looks like a real fighter! It matches everything you said about a good fighter beetle! But the one you guys found must be way... way... Smaller. Bigger. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh... <laughs> you got some experience catching beetles too, huh? Nope! This is the first one Paimon's ever caught! Well, looks like you got a real knack for this. You'll be a fellow beetle fighting expert in no time. I mean, not as good as me, but, <laughs> but still. Oh, so overall, not that good then. Uh, anyway, great. With both your beetle and mine, I can tell this will finally be the one. This time, I'm gonna win for sure. This will finally be the one? You've never won before? Well, uh... You know, that's that's just life, man. There are so many people in this world who are talented, uh, passionate, but it's no guarantee that things will go their way. So many unrelated things have to come together at once in just the right way to make victory happen. Uh, there's this word that really sums it up nicely, actually. It's a uh, coincidence. As in pure luck? Huh. Guess it makes no difference whether we have Paimon's beetle or not, then. Might as well just... Uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> let's, let's not do anything rash here, you know? I think both of these fine beetles have a shot at winning. Let's just hang on to them and give them both a try. A true warrior never leaves a good beetle behind. <laughs> Anyway, uh, time to head back and get this show started. Man, I am psyched for this. Woo! Let's go! Finally! You're back! Can we start our beetle fight now? Yeah, sure thing, buddy. But you better watch out. I brought a real winner back this time. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not scared of your beetle. Go, go, Stripey Ghost! I've got this fight in the bag. Let's go, Nimble Ninja! <laughs> huh? When did you come up with that name? Come on, you can take him, little guy! Right, finish it. Uh. Oh, no, my little. 
my seventh loss in a row. <laughs> Stripey Ghost is invincible. Even Uncle Ito can't beat him. I won't forget this. I'll beat you next time, I swear. All right, Paimon, you're up. Time to give Crimson Cyclone a shot. Maybe it'll end this losing streak of mine. All right, go get him, Crimson Cyclone! Whoa, that one looks ultra strong. Yeah, well, definitely bigger. But it's still no match for you, Stripey. <laughs> All right, little guy, use your super Paimon tornado! No, I can't believe it. I lost. Yay! We won! Ha! Paima knew Crimson Cyclone would be the best! Boy, did that one put up a fight! Woo! It wiped the floor with Stripey Ghost! <laughs> I know a real beetle trainer when I see one. Way to kick some beetle butt, partner. <laughs> see? Paimon's got real talent! Of course, Crimson Cyclone has to take some of the credit, too. Why don't we let Daisuke use Crimson Cyclone? Oh, right. Yeah, now that the beetle fighting's over and all. Hmm? This is for you, Daisuke. Huh? For me? You're really giving it to me? Go ahead, take it, Daisuke. When we finally get back to the city, you can show it off to all your friends. But... will we ever be able to go back? Of course we will. Trust me. I never go back on my word. Anyway, I got some things I gotta discuss with my friends here. Uh, go play with Granny for a while, would ya? <laughs> There's a good boy. Good. The kid doesn't suspect a thing. You're from the Tinryo Commission, aren't you? I bet you're here to capture Uncle Ito. Huh? Hey, didn't I tell you? They're my friends. Uh, in fact, they're they're in the gang. <laughs> We're practically family. That's not true. I already know everyone in your little gang, but I've never seen these two before. Uncle Ito didn't do anything wrong. Don't take him away. And not only did he not do anything wrong, he also saved my life. He's not a bad guy. Hey, uh, some things we don't tell the outsiders, remember? Uh, how should I explain? I'm a real lousy liar. Ito, sometimes you need to just say what you have to say. Uh, don't worry about us. <sighs> I guess. Thanks, Granny. Seems I can't hide it anymore. Come with me. I'll explain everything. I'll be honest with you. This thing the Tenryo Commission is investigating, with someone going around taking people and their possessions, it wasn't me. Any of it. I have my own reasons for lying about it, and I really didn't want to get innocent people caught up in this while I'm still trying to solve the real problem here. I'm the same as you. I just want to avoid conflict at all costs. But it's just not worth it if someone gets hurt. So why? You say that you're the culprit. <sighs> well, maybe you don't know because you're outlanders, but it all started a long, long time ago with the story of the Crimson Oni and the Blue Oni. Hold on a second. If you're talking about that fairy tale, we've heard that one already. Oh, so you already know. Well, that makes things a whole lot easier. So, is the story from the fairy tale really true? Everything about the fate of the Oni is true. The Blue Oni chose exile, and the Crimson Oni stayed behind. But the other details aren't historically accurate. Fairy tales are nice stories, but there's something they leave out. It's a little thing called the cold, hard truth. The Inazuma of long ago was a dangerous place. If you wanted the Raiden Shogun's protection, you had to have a good relationship with the humans. The Oni are a proud kind, so it wasn't easy for them to ask others for acceptance. 
Over time, the Oni eventually split into two factions. The Crimson Oni were friendly with the humans, but the Blue Oni? They were more stubborn and insisted on keeping to their own. Hyman thought you were two different species. So really, you're all one family? Yep, that's right. There's no real difference between us. We just paint our horns different colors to show which side we belong to. Because humans were still wary of Oni at the time. The Crimson Oni always hoped to find a way to live in peace with the humans, but the Blue Oni kept clashing with them. Humans didn't see a difference between Crimson and Blue Oni. All they knew was that Oni were hard to get along with. If things were to continue that way, the Oni were never going to get along with humans. And so, the most revered leaders of the Crimson and Blue Oni decided to resolve it once and for all. Over drinks, they swore an oath. The Blue Oni would play the role of Evil Oni to help the Crimson Oni integrate into human society. But the Blue Oni's leader gave two conditions. Huh? What were they? First, the Oni must abandon any prejudice they held against humanity. Every Oni was to accept humans in their heart before the humans accepted them. Oni were not to use their strength to mistreat humans, but were also not to stand for mistreatment against themselves. Second, the Crimson Oni were to integrate with human society, but not by trying to please the humans. The Oni were to embrace their own honest characters, their surging tempers, and their awesome strength to win respect from the humans. In other words, they were to carry on the Oni bloodline while also protecting our Oni pride. After choosing exile, the number of blue Oni began to dwindle, until eventually, they disappeared altogether. Since I first heard the story of the blue and crimson Oni as a kid, ugh, I've heard it countless times in my life. Not once did I ever imagine that the blue Oni clan had actually survived. So you're saying the real culprit was a descendant of the blue Oni? That's right. Most people don't pay attention to the color of an Oni's horns. They probably don't even know that Blue Oni exists. But nothing gets by the Arataki gang. At the scene of the crime, they saw an Oni with different color horns than mine. Still, it'd be strange if the culprit really was a descendant of the Blue Oni. I can't bring myself to accept it. Exactly. They would give up their life before abandoning their pride. I've always respected the Blue Oni for the sacrifice they made. And I know the aspirations my ancestors had for the future of all Oni. Our pride does not allow for any wrongdoing. You don't steal from other people. You don't harm other people, period. My guess is that the Blue Oni was tricked or forced into it somehow. But uh, I don't have any evidence. That's right. If I didn't step in, the Tenryo Commission would have definitely caught them by now. But what does Daisuke have to do with any of this? He said that you saved him so he knows your story, right? He was the one I managed to save from the Ronin after I sent them running from the scene. He was off playing somewhere when they came by and ransacked his house. By the time he came back, his parents had been taken. The whole reason I'm in this is to help this kid find his mom and dad again. I never wanted to tell you any of this. <laughs> my original plan was to knock you both out and take my family to hide somewhere else. There's more to this than just one blue Oni. There's a dangerous group behind everything that's been going on. I didn't want to get anyone else caught up in this mess. That's everything, the whole story. If you don't believe me and want to drag me back to Inazuma City, then I'm gonna fight you with all I've got. But if you're willing to believe me, then please, give me a little time. Once I find the blue Oni, I'll turn the both of us in. I will help you. Yep, I'm on too. The real culprits must be brought to justice. Just treat it like we're here to keep an eye on you. So you, <laughs> all right? I knew you'd be reasonable. I, <laughs> I knew it. I was thinking right from the start. These two fine folks, they're just out here in the pursuit of truth and justice, man. <laughs> we are gonna get along just great. Well, I should tell you, though, things could get a little dangerous, so uh, be ready for anything. <laughs> hey, 
Uh, don't say that I didn't warn you. <laughs> don't worry about us. We're seasoned adventurers. All right. Then our first job is to investigate where this blue oni is hiding out. There's a victim of his that saw him up close, currently taking refuge at Sanganomiya's camp. I figure we can start by talking to him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 